readers, it's Sasha, and today I am going to be doing my July reading wrap-up. I ended up reading a total of 10 books in July, and I want to say that this is probably one of the most successful reading months I've had in the year so far. I feel like I had a really good time reading the books that I picked out, and I cannot wait to share some thoughts with you guys. So let's just dive right in to the stats because I feel like we're going to be here a while. And I'm sorry if you can hear Pepper. It's just how it's going to be. He's really, really excited today. For genres read, I read two contemporary, four fantasy, one historical fiction, one romance, one sci-fi, and one thriller. In terms of pages read, I read 3,826 pages, which is definitely lower than what I have been reading this year, but the quality of the books I've been reading has been higher, so I feel like it makes up for it in so many different ways, so that's great. I read seven young adult books because, obviously, where have you been <laughs> on this channel? I read two adult books and one new adult book. In terms of ratings, I had two five stars, three 4.5 stars, three four stars, one 3.5 star, and one two stars. Star. That's all I have for stats, so let's dive into what I read. The very first book I read this month was Elats Away by Darcy Little Badger. I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I love this book. This book is about a young indigenous girl whose cousin is actually murdered, but everybody is writing it off as an accident and nobody's really thinking all that much about it, but she can't stop thinking about it. So she ends up going to his town where he lives with his wife and his child, and she's kind of like caught up in the investigation aspects of it. And on top of all that, she can also talk to spirits. It's got some fantasy elements, some magical realism elements in there. I feel like I would qualify it more as a magical realism than a fantasy book, but there were certain fantastical paranormal elements, so maybe I'm wrong. But that's okay. The writing was really beautiful. I really enjoyed the writing. I can't wait to pick up Others by Darcy Little Badger. I thought they did a great job writing this story and creating such a unique environment from anything that I've read before, so I really loved that. They also did a thing where they <laughs> acknowledged the fact that vets get paid a lot less than people think they get paid and they assume that they get paid like a lot more and I just want to let you know that that is not true. Vets, at least in Canada, at least in this area that I'm in, get paid really poorly for the amount of work that they do and the amount of studying they have to do to get there. And so this book acknowledged that and I was just like, this is good because I'm really tired of having that like argument with people like vets get paid so much. It's like, no, <laughs> they don't. I wish I could tell you they did, but they don't. They deserve to, but they don't. There was also a lot of casual queerness and there was a lot of asexual rep in our main character. And so those aspects were really fun as well, just because it was just something that was like mentioned casually. It didn't need this like big coming out story. It didn't need any of that. And sometimes it's nice to just have that casually thrown into a story because it's just like it's a casually thrown into life you know what i mean it's like we don't always need a, a reveal a big oh my God, hey. or whatever like it doesn't it's not always necessary so i really liked that they did that here cons about the story it definitely reads young i thought that this girl elatsue i was like what's her name Duh. i thought that elatsue was a lot younger than she was she's actually 17 in the story but she reads and acts and sounds like a 13 14 year old and ya is definitely a spectrum like i definitely go from like super young YA all the way up to like 17, 18. And so when I'm reading a book with a 17 or 18 year old protagonist, my hope is that it reads like a 17 or 18 year old protagonist would. That is what it is. That was just a minor detail that I didn't love, which is why it's not five stars. But overall, 10 out of 10, like the story itself was very cool. Just a couple things to mention. A lot of people felt that the magic and the fantasy elements weren't tied in really well to the real world aspects, which looking back, I can definitely agree on because people could just like randomly have these ghosts and there was like fairies. And at one point there were vampires and it just like, it wasn't tied into the story very well. There were these things that we could have explored, but we focused more heavily on the murder mystery, which is totally valid. I love murder mysteries, but just throwing in some fantasy and magical realism elements, it's not always going to be as helpful as you think it will be. And a lot of people also found this book to be very trope heavy. I personally didn't, but maybe look into the tropes prior to going into this book because you might find that there are several that you're not a big fan of and then your overall experience would be lower. So that's what I'm going to say about that. But stay tuned because I do have a vlog where I go, I think, more in depth on my feelings for Elatsway. So stay tuned for that. The next book I ended up reading was Here We Are Now by Jasmine Warga. I also did a vlog for this that just came out the video prior to this, my author alphabet for the letter J again. And I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is about a girl who has never really known her father until one day he shows up on her doorstep after she writes all these letters to him. By the way, he's this big rock star and he wants her to come to his home hometown to meet his 
father who is dying. I liked this book in the way that it really brought a great familial dynamic to young adult. I feel like so many young adult focus on like high school relationship and like one aspect of family maybe, but this really brought familial bonds from both mother and father and grandparents that she didn't know. And it was just a really, really positive way to bring the story in. There were also really healthy discussions on grief and love that we had in this book that I feel like were just so important to the young adult genre. I just feel like in so many ways, young adult can be used to really enhance and help young people. But in so many books I've read it just it doesn't do that at all and at times I'm just like like what is the purpose what like what are we doing here and I don't know I just I definitely feel like here we are now talks about things in a really healthy way and about halfway through the book like when we hit this mark here I feel like the story really took off I wasn't necessarily connecting with the characters as much in the first half of the story and the story itself felt a little bit dull but where we're getting all these really, really healthy discussions and all of this familial stuff I feel like it's from the second half of the book the second half of the book really sold it and sealed the deal, licked the envelope, did all of those cool things for this. The reason I rated this book less than five stars is because, again, this is the same thing. It reads really freaking young. She's 16 or 17. She reads like she's 12 at some points. And it's at the point where I'm just like, have you ever met another teenager? Like, they don't talk like this and they don't think like this all the time. And that's where I really, like, I felt like it was lacking for me. A lot of people really hated Talia, the main character. They thought she was really dull. A lot of people preferred the familial aspect to it. And I would definitely agree Talia as a main character is not the best. This is definitely not a character driven story. This is a plot driven story because we're focusing on the family. We're focusing on what it's like to enter into this new and unexplored adventure. And the characters sometimes lack. And so I definitely see that. And I definitely see where people would be coming from. And a lot of people said that there was a romance where there didn't need to be one. And I absolutely agree with that. There was a tiny little romance thrown in there. And honestly, like it just it was so thrown in there. It was just like, you have to meet like a romance quota in YA. Like that's what it felt like. Like this one didn't need that. We had friendship, we had family. We didn't need that unnecessary zero chemistry romance. Like it didn't need to happen. But overall, I loved it. So that's that. <laughs> the next book that I ended up reading was The Mister by E.L. James. I did an entire reading vlog dedicated to this, which I will link in the description below. But oh my God, I gave this two out of five stars, which is more than I was expecting to give it. This is about a girl who ends up fleeing her country of Albania due to some thank you pepper due to some really difficult circumstances and she meets this man Maxim Trevelyan or whatever who just became the head of his family's estates because his older brother had passed away and so he's dealing with all of this stuff and he's like a player and you know like you know how it be and she comes in and she's like oh my god like I'm shy and anxious and he's just like you're mine so that that's the plot of this book there's really not much else to it but what I will say is that there was more consent than I was expecting just given Fifty Shades of Grey and how borderline sexual assaulty it was from what I've heard like I again I've never read it I don't have intentions to but just from like excerpts that I've read and things that I've heard about it I've heard it's very like not consensual and this one like there were some fine lines where I was like we're almost not consensual but everything at the end of the day was and I thought that was a pretty big step up from Fifty Shades of Grey. I also liked the main character Alessia, the one who was fleeing from Albania. I thought she was a very interesting character. And just given the story and who was writing it, I didn't expect to be interested in a character, but I was. But then we go into the cons and honestly like my main one is what the fuck is this writing because this writing was so bad like the right the writing is so bad the grammar mistakes oh my god the typos oh my god they were so bad <laughs> i feel so bad saying that but like i did not like that it was not good there was also a line that said music to my dick and i just think that is where we're at with the writing and so that was obviously not great and then just in general plot characters everything else other than like alessia was pretty uninteresting and i feel like we were very stagnant halfway through it wasn't great there is a lot of toxic masculinity in this book that is something to go into this knowing because he treats her like some fragile little flower who's gonna break and she's been through like way more in her life than he could ever even imagine so i just i wish he would treat her with the respect and the equality that she deserved just because she's been through so much and so it definitely showed the severe severe toxic masculinity it's very hard for me to decide whether or not this book is plot or character driven because all of them sucked except alessia and i just feel like the plot also wasn't going anywhere because this book is almost 500 pages it's only 490 pages it doesn't look like it but it's 490 pages and it's just like what is the need i don't know and that's all i'm gonna say next is lovely war by julie berry i gave this 
five out of five stars. This is also in my author alphabet for the letter J. Again, linked in the description if you missed it. But this is about two love stories told by Aphrodite and a couple of the other Greek gods. And these love stories were in a World War One. So this definitely hits like everything. Like this is conceptually a stunning story. The idea and the way that Julie Berry executed it were so incredibly brilliant. And I love this so much. The characterization was top tier. I loved every single character. And I feel like every character had their own very distinct and unique voice. And I really enjoyed that. I always knew who I was reading. And also every single god was distinct as well. So I really, really loved that. And also the friendships that were built in here were really beautiful. Specifically between Colette and Hazel, the two females in the relationships. Oh my god. <laughs> Their friendship was so beautiful and it was so pure and I just, I really loved that as well. I had one con with it and there were so many italics. Like everything was italicized and I was just like, this isn't necessary. <laughs> I feel like we don't need to italicize everything in our writing. I don't know. For me, it just like, it's like the same with having like too many brackets or too many like quotations. I don't know. It's weird. Like it just, it didn't need to happen. So this does air on the boring side in the middle for some people and I guess I could kind of see it but for me it didn't feel that way. I was so engrossed in the story but it's quite a big book. It's tall, it's chunky so I can definitely see where people will get bored but for me there was nothing boring about it because everything was just so beautifully written and beautifully executed that I was never bored. It is also kind of insta-lovey but that worked for me in this particular instance. I hate insta-love most of the time but I guess in this type of world where you really don't know if you have tomorrow it makes sense to you know find someone have this connection with them and then want nothing more than that connection with them like it, it makes sense given the situation i will also say that there are some really really hard scenes in here that might be hurtful to black readers who choose to pick this up i was a little cautious going into this i read the historical notes in the back that i highly 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 recommend reading to further your knowledge and to better understand where Julie Berry was coming from in terms of writing this and where she got her research and what she did to write this book. She really goes into depth in this historical note. So it's back here and she talks about so many things. She talks about black servicemen in the Great War, the long dark night, exporting Jim Crow, the hero's welcome, women and World War One, the impact of World War One, a war of the old upon the young, and then she also did an in memoriam section as well as as a bibliography. So she really put in a lot of research. At some point, I feel like the historical note would be good to start with just so that you know a little bit of what's coming because there are some really intense and very realistic and really hard scenes to read. So I just want to caution everybody going forward that it's it's hard at times. Like it is very difficult to read at times. Next, I ended up reading Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. <laughs> I think that's how you say her name. This is about a girl who ends up going missing and then 10 days later, another woman and her daughter go missing. And so it's is told in multiple perspectives. It's told through the perspective of a neighbor of one of the women who goes missing. It's told from the perspective of a teenage girl who has been missing for 10 years. And it's told from the perspective of one of the women who goes missing and also from her son who was four at the time of her disappearance but is now 14. So lots of different perspectives in a pretty short book. I didn't know how I was going to feel about it but I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved it. I'm very easy to please when it comes to thrillers. This wasn't like a groundbreaking thriller but I just am so easy to please and it's really pathetic honestly how easy I am to please with thrillers but I love this I thought the story was interesting I was constantly interested I read this so quickly like I was constantly like okay I'm, I have to know what's happening and I love that I love feeling that way I felt like there was always just something was pushing the plot forward and it wasn't in a way that felt rushed so I loved that and the ending oh my god it definitely you you definitely have to like suspend reality for a second here but the ending was so good the ending had me quaking i did not see it the entire way through i did not see it and then certain things started coming up and i knew something was gonna come up and then i was i was i was quaking the ending had me quaking but i will say that they do use the arsler at the beginning of this story and i'm not a big fan of the arsler it can be very harmful i understand why she did it because she was using it in terms of the captors and the captors were clearly very uneducated people and so they called the girl the arsler and so like I understand like someone very 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 uneducated might think that that's okay and even if they're not they've also kidnapped a person so it's just like I don't think they care about right and wrong but I didn't really love that I felt like there were other things that they could have used to still get the same feelings across and also the multiple point of views did take me out of the story a little bit at first at first I was kind of like I don't know what's going on but as the story goes on it makes more sense and it starts to become
become a lot more interesting. So I definitely loved that. Next, I ended up reading Burning Glass by Catherine Purdy. Catherine Purdy was one of my favorite authors of 2020. I loved her so much, so I wanted to pick up her other series. And thankfully, Goodreads gave this to me and I was thriving with it. So this is about a girl named Sonia who is an aura seer, so somebody who can see the auras of others around them. And she ends up getting taken to work with the king slash emperor to become his like sovereign aura seer. Things are happening. It's a YA, so a revolution is like bound to occur. That is what happens in this. I gave this four to five stars. I was honestly like, I was surprised because a lot of people hated this. A lot of people gave it like one star. It made me feel happy. It just, it made me happy to read. It was like reading something that I would have died for in high school. And sometimes you just need that kind of book in your life. There's also something about her writing that really appeals to me. And I can understand why other people like wouldn't necessarily love it. But her writing is so appealing to me. It makes me feel so good. And it really brings me into a story. So I like had nothing bad to say about her writing. This also did have a love triangle. I'm a fan of love triangles. I literally don't know what to tell you. I'm one of those people that like I like love triangles I don't like them sometimes like sometimes I feel like they're stupid and unnecessary but for some reason this one worked for me it definitely is not an original fantasy like everything is pretty much carbon copy of what fantasy is and all of the young adult stereotypes in fantasy are in this like there's it, it doesn't add anything new to the genre there were lots and lots and lots of typos which was also really frustrating and the beginning to the story was really confusing and didn't really add anything to the story it does carry on into the series a bit more the beginning does but for the most part, I felt like the beginning was a bit unnecessary and I feel like they could have gotten to the story without going through that whole situation. So overall, I did really enjoy it and I picked up the second one right away, which is Crystal Blade. And honestly, the difference in thickness between these books is insane. I really love this book. I'm not gonna go into what the plot was, but I gave this book four out of five stars again. I thought the character growth was top tier. A lot of people did not like the character growth, but I loved it. Character growth doesn't even necessarily mean, like maybe she didn't grow but like development character development like she developed into a not great person <laughs> and I kind of like to see that I like to see kind of like her descent into like being a bad person <laughs> it was kind of fun I also really liked the new characters that we got and by new I mean they were definitely in the old one but we did not see them as much so they're in the second one and they were great <laughs> I just could not get behind the amount of grammatical errors in this book there were so many errors and I was getting so frustrated because this was such a good series and it really had the potential this could have been so much but it was not simple but it's okay it was fine next i ended up picking up yoke by mary hk Choi. this was the winders book club pick for the month of july which is being hosted on darian's channel on a day that has already happened so i will link that live show in the description below but this is about a girl who lives in new york city she's a korean american and she is met with her sister who is kind of estranged they haven't really talked in a while and her sister tells her that she has cancer and it's them kind of coming together after this long period of time apart and i almost gave this a 3.5 which was such a spicy take <laughs> but I ended up giving it a four, but I'll go into that a little bit more. The writing was incredible. I do like genuinely feel like Mary H.K. Choi is like a really, really incredible wordsmith. The way that she crafted the story was beautiful. I didn't have like all the emotions that other people felt, but I was definitely like intrigued by the story. The concept was very dark and very heavy. And that's honestly something that I find interesting to read about sometimes. Sometimes you just need a dark and heavy book. And sometimes you just need a light and fluffy read. And there's nothing wrong with needing either of those things. But if you're ever looking for something dark and heavy, this this will do ya. This will do it just fine. This book is very raw and authentic. I just wasn't emotionally impacted in this way by this book, but it definitely would be for some people and I can see why it impacted people. And I feel like reading this at a point in your life when, you know, maybe you know somebody who's very personally, who's dealt with cancer in the past and maybe you know somebody who's passed away from cancer like all of these things are really scary and so reading this you might have a more emotional connection but I just didn't I personally just wasn't really vibing with this from the get-go like from the get-go the story itself was not connecting with me I also really didn't like how many swear words were used I know like that might just be like my old like teaching coming out in me but there was just like like nobody swears that much I feel like on every second page there was like a fuck or like a shit or something I just I feel like it wasn't necessary Oh my god, I put the dust jacket on wrong. I just personally didn't feel like all of the swear words were necessary in the story. I also hated all the pop culture references. Like, I get it. It's a contemporary. It happens in real world. But do we have to bring up Gilmore Girls 87 times? I've never seen Gilmore Girls. I know it's like a thing everybody loves. I've never seen it. So I have no interest in reading about it because I haven't 
try to watch it. So stop. I also didn't love when this switched between past and present mid chapter. I just felt like it wasn't necessary and I got so confused because I was like, oh, hold on, where am I? So I definitely feel like this was unnecessarily switching sometimes and it didn't really add as much to the story. But I will say that the second part of the story, like the, I want to say like the last third maybe, really sealed the deal for me and really made me love the story a little bit more. So I did end up giving it the four stars. But if it weren't for the, <laughs> the last third and the, the way that this concluded, I probably would have given this a 3.5 or a 3. And I'm so sorry to Casey for this. Then I read a five star book, which is one of my favorite books of the year. And I could not believe how much this impacted me in so many ways. I loved it so much. Where She Fell by Caitlin Ward. This is a book about a girl who ends up falling through a sinkhole. And she ends up in this really advanced group of tunnels where she meets the colony, aka these like 12 or 13 people who have been stuck also down in the ground with all of these weird creatures that nobody really knows existed. So I love this so fucking much. It was so good. The way this had me quaking, like honest to God quaking. I just could not handle it. It was so good. Anyway, I gave it five and five stars. Fantastic. Fantastic. The story was unique to anything I've read before. I've definitely heard of the concept. I, I feel like I've seen like movie trailers or something where this is similar. I haven't read or seen anything like it. So this like absolutely destroyed me. Loved it. 10 out of 10. I feel like there's really good anxiety rep in this. I suffer from really bad social anxiety and that is what she has. Even though this is like a sci-fi-ish story, I definitely felt like seen with the representation, which was a really cool feeling to have. And just in general, everything was top tier. The romance was great, the friendships were great, and I loved this so much. The only con I had was that there were some very vivid descriptions of spiders, and I have arachnophobia. I'm very, like, irrationally afraid. Like, I almost started crying when I, like, she drew a picture of a spider. It wasn't even, like, it was literally a circle with eight legs and eyes, and I almost shit myself. Like, I was crying almost. So that part really stressed me out. I really don't like spiders, but this one had, like, big, big, big spiders, and I was scared. <laughs> I was very scared. But overall, I loved this. This isn't just about being trapped in a cave. There is a lot of anxiety rep and a lot of friendships and there are a lot of other themes going on. And I don't know, maybe I wanted it to just be about a girl who was trapped in a cave. But while I was reading it, I realized I needed this anxiety part of it and this friendship part of it. It really like hit me where I needed it to hit me and I loved that. This book definitely needs you to suspend belief because it's pretty unrealistic that you can live like underground and have all of these like weird creatures so close to the center of the earth where magma is a thing. Anyways, like it definitely needs you to suspend belief, which is why this is classified as a fantasy but I classify it more as a science fiction just because it is science fiction -y in my head. And finally, we are almost done. It is the last book I read, which was Frozen Rain by Catherine Purdy, the final book in the Burning Glass trilogy. I thought this was a solid conclusion to the story. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was definitely less good than the other two books, but there were definitely some moments of pure happiness for me and moments that made sense. And I feel like the conclusion of the story was exactly where it needed to be. I just felt like getting there was a little lackluster. I feel like there was actual character growth to this time and not just character development, but I feel like this did touch a lot on loving who you are and not what you can or cannot do and I think that's a really important lesson to learn. I personally couldn't get on board with this story as much because one of the neighboring empires to Ryaznin is Estengard and Estengard speaks a different language than Ryaznin and um guess what they spoke? They spoke Google translated French. I don't know what it is about Catherine Purdy and French because she did do this in Bone Cryer's Moon as well but <laughs> I was just like it kind of took me out of the story a little bit because usually with fantasies they'll make like make up a language or like incorporate several languages together or something but this didn't do that it literally was just French <laughs> I was just like and it was French to the point where I could understand slash read it so I know it was very very simple French so that was kind of frustrating for me and that's why I couldn't really get on board with this but overall it was fine those are all the books that I read in the month of July so that was exciting if you've read any of these let me know in the comments below how you felt about them and how you are feeling about them let me know if any of these books are sparking your interest and you want to put them on your tbr i definitely recommend where she fell in lovely war but that's just me personally but yes that's everything thank you so much for tuning into this video please do not forget to like comment and subscribe for more content i am posting once a week and i have some really fun videos coming up that you're not going to want to miss out on and <laughs> i'm so sorry and until next time bye readers